We've all seen those plain little sachets, which are sometimes included with electrical appliances or shoes, on which it's usually stated that you should not eat the contents. They normally contain little beads of silica gel. This is a silicon dioxide with two important properties. A very large interior surface and highly hydroscopic. Silica gel is therefore referred to as a desiccant. It binds humidity to a greater degree than most other substances. Therefore, if an electrical appliance is to be protected against humidity during a long voyage by sea, for example, a sachet containing a desiccant is included in the package. Our test shows how this works. We produce steam with a conventional kettle and collect it in a glass. The glass steams up considerably and is placed upside down on a surface. This is our comparison glass. With the second glass, we carry out the actual test. A desiccant sachet is added to the moist air under the glass. It soon becomes clear why it's called a desiccant. The glass is much less steamed up than our comparison glass. Desiccants are also used on an industrial scale in the plastics industry. For an optimal result, it's important that the plastic material is dried to the prescribed residual moisture level before the injection or extrusion process. There are several ways of doing this. Today, we'll look at the dry air dryer. These are usually used when a hydroscopic material has to be dried and a specific dew point is required. The first thing to mention here is this. A drying system generally consists of two functional units. One unit which generates the actual process air, the dry air, and one which provides the airflow onto the actual drying bin. So I've already mentioned the second functional unit, that is the drying silos themselves, in which the granulate is changed from a moist state to a dry state. The dry air unit contains a special desiccant which reduces the humidity to such an extent that we can achieve dew points in the range of minus 26 to minus 40 degrees. The dew point used depends on the requirements. In principle, the dry air dryer works by pre-dried air transferring the humidity from the plastic to a molecular sieve, a special desiccant. The molecular sieve can be regenerated by baking out. The moisture absorbed by it is removed again by heating. This means it can be used again and again. You can picture a molecular sieve more or less like this. Nitrogen and oxygen can filter through, but not water. The material is filled into the drying bin from the top and removed at the bottom for further processing. It's dried passing through top to bottom. However, material can only be removed at a pace that allows for the necessary time of exposure inside the drying bin. Mo prefers his car to be very clean, so he takes it to the car wash regularly. After a thorough wash, it's polished, of course, with a chamois leather. But the chamois becomes very wet after a while. Mo spreads it out in the sun to allow it to dry. Meanwhile, he can carry on working with a second chamois. Operating with two drying cartridges works in a very similar way. One is active, while the other is regenerating. As the amount of water absorbed by the molecular sieve is limited, dryers must be designed for the specific application in order to work reliably, effectively and efficiently. Ideally, the result is a continual flow of dried material. This ensures that the end result is ideal.